Non-binary people aren't real, and they're just a way that transphobes can make fun of us more. Fellow transgenders, I just came up with a new word. Feel free to use it. The word is Miss Ender. You're fine. Like, this is just transphobia. Like, I don't think any of you know what that word means. Oh, hi. Welcome back to my main channel. So, if I'm a bit echoey in this video, it's because I'm sitting in a completely empty apartment here in Los Angeles. I am about to go to a hotel and then hop on a flight and then I'll be in Austin, Texas for the foreseeable future of my life, which is pretty crazy to say. The movers came, took everything that I own. I'm sitting in an empty closet right now. Took my car, took my whole life, and it is all somewhere in between California and Texas right now on a truck. It's been a very hectic and chaotic move. If you follow me on Instagram, you've seen that, but it's almost over. Thank God. But you know, with the winds of change and all the things happening in my life, there are some things that just aren't going to change, which is that I am Voldemort to the trans community, which is crazy because I'm fucking trans. Today we're going to talk about trans pages trying to get my Instagram taken down for calling myself a tranny, which is a slur apparently I can't use even though I am a tranny. <laughs> and we're going to react to some TikToks with trans people who are very, very mad at me. Nothing like a good old trans TikTok video. These are, you guys love these, they're easy to film, I'm in the middle of moving, this is perfect. So let's just... Let's just get into it. So before we get to the TikToks, yes, briefly, my Instagram page may be deleted according to this Instagram notification because I called myself a tranny. I said that I am turning 28 soon, which I am, which is disgusting to say out loud. And I said that's like 58 in tranny years. Apparently I'm not allowed to say that. Basically I was on Instagram and I started getting tagged in all these trans pages saying that I use a slur and I need to be reported and blah, blah, blah. I don't get how every group gets to reclaim their own slurs except for Actually, no, people let the trans community do it, just not me. Apparently, I'm the only one that can't. So let's react to some good old trans TikTok videos. I'm not on TikTok, I'm banned, so I'm not allowed to actually respond to these on TikTok, so we're gonna do it here. So this person captioned the video Blair White with putting exclamation points, basically censoring the phrase Blair White, because again, I am she who must not be named. I am Baltimore to these people, literally. It is literally a slur for them to say my name. Non-binary people aren't real, and they're just a way that transphobes can make fun of us more. See, so I'm just going to say, this is what they do. This is what people love to do. They will gaslight you, and they will claim that you are claiming that we think non-binary people aren't real. Trans people aren't real. This group people aren't real. In what world would I ever say non-binary people are not real? Y'all are very much existent. You're very much out there, you're very much visible, and if you didn't exist, how would I ever address you? They will take me having disagreements about something and extend it to, Blair White said I don't exist, or I shouldn't exist. Like, who is saying that? Wow, she's really transphobic, isn't she? Yeah, just wait till she hears about near pronouns. <laughs> yeah, wait, near, pron near pronouns aren't real, and they're just a way to make transphobes make fun of us trans people. I'm sorry, was that supposed to be funny? Was there like some sort of comedic timing that I was missing in that? Like, I don't, I don't understand. Who is this person? The caption is, anyways, I use doll, z, moon, and it pronouns. One of the things that I've learned since changing my pronouns to they, them, is that if people really care about you, then they're going to get your pronouns right. The whole, well, I'm used to you using she, her pronouns, um, so it's really hard for me to remember. Excuse is, like, not cutting it anymore. It's absolute bull. Like, if you went your whole life saying, oh, the earth is flat, and then one day somebody tells you the earth isn't flat, the earth is actually round, are you going to be like, oh, well, that's too hard for me to remember, so I'm just going to say that the earth is flat. Okay, so I want to give some advice for this one. I want to give some honest, real advice about this because I remember being early in my transition and, you know, feeling frustrated if people didn't use the right pronouns. But what I've learned is that it is so much of a two-way street. All the adults in my family naturally just transition, for lack of a better term, to using she and her for me once I actually physically transitioned and embodied it and they got it and they could see it and it was tangible and whatever. But I've never talked about this. I have two nephews and a niece, and I'm an uncle to them. And they say the word uncle sometimes. Usually they'll say just Blair, but the word uncle comes out, and I've never talked about that, and that might be weird for you guys to even hear, but for me, I actually don't 
care. I would never in a million years lash out at my nephews and my niece for saying the word uncle because at the end of the day, that's who I was to them for the beginning of their life. And I just don't have the heart to take that from them. I don't care what they call me. All I care is that I'm in their life and they love me. That's all I care about. If the day ever comes that they naturally switch to she or they naturally switch to calling me their Aunt Blair, then I'm just going to silently accept that as well. So maybe that's a little weird and I know that y'all cannot picture me as an uncle, but to them I am and that's just what it is. But yeah, I said all that to say that sometimes you have to be accepting of people in your family who are having a hard time as well and you might not want to hear it, but especially with they, them pronouns because for 99% of the population, it is unnatural to say they, them in reference to someone whose sex you are aware of and when they're one person. You can argue it down all you want, but that's just not how most people speak. A legit question. What is a non-binary parent called by their children? Hi there, non-binary dad. My kids call me Nini. Uh, there's a few options. I've heard of Ren. But you just said dad. Hold on. Hi there, non-binary dad. My kids call me Nini. Yeah, you, you did call yourself. Why would you call yourself dad, but not let your kids call you dad? Like, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't get that. I'm just going to go on to the next one. That one made my brain hurt. Hey guys, let's talk gender, specifically Libra genders. Firstly, know the difference between a static or a stable gender, one that doesn't change, and a fluid gender, one that does change. Now, Libra genders. Libra gender people feel mostly a gender with a slight connection to another gender. Firstly, Libra feminine, and I do want you guys to keep in mind for the rest of the video that there is another black line down there. The feminine people feel mostly agender and slightly feminine. Describe it as feeling a strong connection to agender as, as well as a lesser connection to femininity. Okay, I'm not gonna pretend like I understood almost any part of that. What I am gonna say is sometimes I feel like people just reach so hard to feel like they're a part of something. Like I think just the fact that these words are made up like constantly just adding to it invalidate the entire thing altogether. Obviously this person's not a bad person, nothing against this person, but I think that when I see people speaking like this, my honest view of it is people who are very, very uncomfortable with themselves and looking for any sort of word or any sort of label, any sort of group they can attach themselves to to validate their feelings of themselves. And what you learn when you get older is that it's very unhealthy to seek validation from other people. You can only find it within yourself and the very few people around you that you love. Fellow transgenders, I just came up with a new word. Feel free to use it. The word is misender. Misendering is when somebody uses a gendered term that isn't technically correct for you, doesn't technically fit, but you're not rushing to correct it, you know? A stranger calls me sir, I got misendered. I'm not a guy, but I don't mind being called sir. A Disney cast member called me princess. I'm not a girl, but you know, I'm pretty as a princess. I got misendered. A cis person calls me agender? Let's not correct, I have a bunch of them, but you're on the right track. It's in the umbrella. I'll give you that point. I got misendered. Y'all just be making stuff up. Oh my god. <laughs> gender reveal parties are pretty bizarre because you're just revealing your baby's genitals to the world and that's like really intrusive for a little baby gender reveal parties are not about genitals i don't know why your mind went there you're gonna have to talk to yourself about that maybe figure that out internally but it has nothing to do with that and this is the point where people get really frustrated because it sucks the fun out of everything like I know people that have babies and I know that doing gender reveal parties is very fun for them. I find it a little bit, I don't know, we doing a whole party for a gender reveal? Okay, so I have to come to your gender reveal party, get you a gift, come to your baby shower, get you a gift, come to the birth, give you a gift, like, it gets to be a bit much. But I would never, like, try to suck the fun out of people experiencing the joy of having a baby. Like, I don't know, and it's just not that deep, like, to call it transphobic is just, ugh. Plus, it's really a, you know, a sex reveal party, not a gender reveal party, because gender is not dictated purely by a baby's genitals. It is like 99.7% of the time. It'll be okay. But sure, let's bitch about it. My pronouns are she, her, but I've noticed that in professional environments, I like the way people treat me better when they don't know I'm a she, her. 
Girl, there is literally no one that comes across you in any scenario of your life. Girl. This is literally a biological woman who looks 1000% like a biological woman talking about how people don't know that she goes by she, her. Every single human being you interact with, girl, at the very least assumes that you go by she, her and knows that you go by she, her. I'm convinced all the, literally all this pronoun sh all this sh it's literally just a way for people to feel special. It's literally a way for people who have nothing going on in their lives to feel like they have something going on. You have, you think people look at you and think anything other than she, her? I can't, I can't. So this one is about how you're transphobic if you don't date or engage with trans people on an intimate level, my favorite topic. It is rooted in fundamental transphobia. I hear a lot of gay men saying to me, well, I like, I like men. I think that trans men are handsome, but I could never ever sleep with one of them. Well, thank you for telling everyone you're very boring. I like how it's boring if someone isn't attracted to the same things as you. I like how now it's socially acceptable to bully people into having a certain sexuality as long as it doesn't hurt the feelings of trans people or of LGBT people when they were the ones getting bullied for thousands of years to have a certain sexuality. Like, the pendulum just always swings, doesn't it? From one extreme to the other, I can't. Also, you're like, this is just transphobia. Like, I don't think any of you know what that word means, but it is, if you have to exempt or rationalize why you don't want to be with a transgender person in the first place. Trying to get you to see how you're being transphobic is impossible. Yeah, I actually think this person is the one who has no concept of what transphobia is. I literally am fully convinced that anyone who thinks that people who don't want to date trans people is an example of transphobia have probably never actually experienced any transphobia in their entire lives. If you ever have and you feel that unsafe feeling or you've been actually violated because you're trans, you would never compare that. I'm someone who's been in situations where I've been violated because I'm trans or I've been attacked or harassed because I'm trans. And you know what? It's not even in the same universe as someone saying, oh, you're trans, it's not really for me, but we can be friends. What is wrong with you? Anyways, I'm over it. I have a flight to catch. Oh, quick update. I believe my episode of Dr. Phil is airing on September 13th. Everyone keeps asking about it, so I think that's the date, September 13th. But other than that, I will see you soon, Austin, Texas. Soon as in tomorrow. By the time you guys are watching this video, I'll probably already be in Austin. Make sure you guys follow me on Instagram and Twitter, not on TikTok, because I'm banned and it's cancer. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.